Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, which is about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is one of the top most sought after photographers in the world. And his clients include Jessica Alba, Zoe Saldana, Lucy Hale, Noah Centineo, Shea Mitchell, and Charles Melton, just to name a few. He is the one and only Hudson Taylor. And today we are going beyond beauty. Hey Hudson, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hey Rusty, how you doing buddy? Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> Hudson, you have been doing such incredible photography through all of these years now. I mean, it's truly impressive, but I want to start off by first, if you can share about what you did with your life growing up in Hawaii and what schools you attended. Oh, that's a, that's a fun one. Um, you know, I think my main school was beach. Um, I wasn't quite an academic, which is why um, you know, uh, academic person, which is why I think, you know, I went into the art world. Uh, I never did well in school. Um, I would, I would try and I would just get busy. You know, my, my brain would go off in different things, uh, um, you know, the beach or, or art. Um, but, uh, I did go to word of life. Um, I graduated from word of life Academy, uh, love that school. Um, taught me a lot of good, uh, morals and whatnot and, um, got me, uh, ready for, for the future. But I went to like three other schools before that, uh, um, high schools at least. Um, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> hey Hudson, beach is a good uh, place to go school at, huh? Yeah, it keeps you on your toes, man. It keeps you on your toes all the time, you know? Um, yeah, the ocean is my, my guru. <laughs> so, and Hudson, what's great, I mean, your family is so beautiful. Your son, Blue, is so cute. And oh. uh, I know your wife, Serena, because she and I were judges at a, at one of the Miss Hawaii USA pageants. And and I heard that she, her modeling agency that she owns is, is like global now. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Um, it's definitely one of the, the top uh, mother agencies, I would say, you know, even in the world, uh, definitely in the nation. Um, she uh, just put so much passion into the agency and people. Uh, we started the whole agency just to help people, honestly. Um, and it just so happens we do it here in Hawaii because we love Hawaii, you know. Um, so we like to grab a lot of people from Hawaii and bring them on the grand scale um, any way we can. So my photography kind of helps that and Serena manages it all. She was an agent at Elite Models, a uh, big agency uh, in LA, New York. Um, it's kind of a worldwide agency as well. So she has the, you know, she just knows how to run an agency, um, which she, yeah, you add that with taking care of people and you got a good formula. <laughs> no, that, you know, that's so terrific to, to see what she's doing. And you were a model for around 10 years. And Hudson, what is the best part of modeling and what's the toughest part of modeling? Ooh, you know, um, that's kind of a catch 22 because the best part of modeling is it always keeps you on your toes. Um, you know, it's, it's always changing, evolving, and, and you never know where you're going to be next. And uh, that's also one of the hardest things of modeling. You never know where you're going to be next. You never know if, you know, the, um, uh, you're going to get a flight uh, an hour from when you just settled down from your last flight. Um, and, and that's also hard, but it's also a gift because it, it keeps you, you know, not bored. So um, that's kind of the best thing. But again, just the travel, being able to meet so many people and everyone just has a, a um, you know, so much uh, um, different perspectives on everything. And so meeting all these artists around the world, is just really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, I think the best and, and worst probably. No, I think, I think the traveling would be incredible. I mean, just to see all these different, uh, different countries and, and Hudson, what got you interested in photography? Oh yeah, that's a question. And um, it's kind of a longer, uh, um, I guess, answer to it. But um, when I was when I was model, uh, I would I would keep fine. I don't know. I have like this deep thing in me that just like I, I, I know it's uh, it sounds, um, 
you know, uh, uh, trying to pat myself on the back, but it's, it's actually true. I have like, I have like this vision of when I see somebody, I just want them to do it, like just do better, you know, like, and like, so I was, I'm like, oh my God, you have so much potential. So anyways, when I was doing modeling, I would find all these uh, friends and they're like, oh yeah, I'm not really, you know, making a, a money doing this, or I'm not really able to travel. I'm not able to, you know, really get my goals. And, you know, I don't like my agent. I don't like this, 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 or that. And I, um, you know, I, I, I would always uh, have a big heart for them, I guess, in that way. So I would just help them. I, I had made a lot of friends. So I would consistently introduce them to different agents and different friends. And, and they always just kept um, helping all my, my friends. And um, it got to the point where I started probably over a hundred models around the world, um, just, just placing them. So with, with different agents and different um, companies. And now the way that works normally is that you get a finder's fee if you place them with like a big agency or something and they do really well. And some of the people I did start were be, you know, did become supermodels and, but I never asked for a dime for it. Um, so this went on for probably three, four years of me just placing people around the world. Um, and, and so that made me have a lot of really, really good friends. Cause people were like, Oh my God, who's this guy just giving away money and uh, giving away money and giving away his time just to help people. And, uh, um, and I got to this guy, um, a lot of people know him here in Hawaii, his name's Jay Alvarez. Um, great look. Uh, and at the time, I, you know, it was hard for me to help him more so than introduce him to like some big agents, because he needed photos. And I was like, you know, I'm pretty sure I could take like a photo better than than you know so and so photographer just like a basic just one photo as long as i get one photo for him it'll really help him so i um so i picked up a like a disposable camera um and and i went out there i said look we're gonna at least i saw somebody shoot film and this is film so i'm gonna at least get you a basic photo so i started shooting a couple of basic photos of him and uh the agents started using it as his front comp card so then Three months into owning a disposable camera, I uh, I told um, my wife I was like, yeah, you know, I kept and again, this is like blind confidence. It's it's really weird. I had no skill. Trust me, I'd never done photography in my life, and um, it, it was just the confidence pushed me forward. As I, I looked at the the photos that all these other photographers were shooting, I was like, okay, it's like it's like a math problem in a way, which I wasn't good at math, but it was like you add you add clothes, you add person, you add um, uh, good emotions, and you got yourself a photo. I could do that. So I was looking at these billboards around the world, like, I could do that. I just add this, this, this. So so anyways, uh, um, I, uh, I told my wife, I'm going to buy all the gear. Um, so I put like, I don't know, close to $20,000 down on like all this uh, gear and stuff and thinking I'm going to be the biggest photographer and like that. Um, and, and I started shooting photos. And the good thing was it, it did happen for me really, really quickly, really, really quickly, just because of how many people I already helped around the world that were also now willing to give back to me when time was needed. So they, you know, gave me great models to work with and all that stuff. But um, I guess uh, credit to my um, my uh, confidence at the time is I screwed up so bad, so hard, so many horrible photos to the point where I had people Instagram messaging like you should not post that. I don't know about, I don't know about you guys, but unless it's a political thing, I don't, I don't know how many times you get, you should not post this. <laughs> like, this is just a photo of a person and you should just not post this because my Photoshop was all off. Everything was just, uh, um, uh, I mean, it was, it was gross to uh, look at uh, my, my uh, progression, but it, it eventually um, started fine tuning. And I, I, um, I kept wanting to just get better. Um, and, and again, credit to my wife. Uh, she, um, I would, I, I, she was like, I think I could probably Photoshop uh, that better than you because she knows art. And I was uh, a little bit and I was, um, I was like, no, this is my thing. So I was, had a whole little ego trip. This is like six years ago. I was like, no, this is my thing. I could do it. I promise I could do it. And then so she would just be home uh, um, Photoshopping in the background, not knowing that like that I was kind of paying attention to what she was doing. And I just noticed she started doing really good. Like I, she started like, like making things way better than I could. So then, so then what ended up happening, she ended up being one of the best retouchers I've ever found. All those, all those covers you see, all the photos, she retouched. We've, I don't think, we've only had retouchers on a couple big jobs. Um, that's just because of the sheer mass of how many photos needed to be done, but she's edited all my photos. So um, I, I really um, am proud of her for, for you know, helping me. Um, I had a lot of great people to help me. Bottom line, a lot of great people to help me.
that was kind of my journey of, of the beginning stages of photography. <laughs> oh, that's that's really fascinating to hear how how you made that transition from modeling into photography and and how you and Serena just make such a great team together. And Hudson, tell me about when you're working with Jessica Alba and Zoe Saldana, for example. Yeah. You know, they they have their style. I mean, what how what do you do to try to complement their style or to enhance their style? Well, I think um, and this is this isn't what most artists do. Um, I've never really saw myself as an artist per se. Um, I, I I've really focused on, you know, just trying to do my best for people and care about people. Um, so that's number one is just you got to care like you can't just like make up stuff you know um, um so make up stuff just for your own sake because right now you're working with teams so so bottom line if i start caring about you know ex like really care i don't think people understand the depth of caring they're like oh yeah i care no i mean like really freaking caring you know like saying hey you know um um you know jessica zoe like how how can i make you be seen in the best light not just my art which is, I think, the reason why I've done well is because I focus really on them, caring about them. So when it comes to um, uh, Jessica Alba, Zoe Saldana, or just anybody, um, it's 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 about potentiality, potentiality. Whereas that I, you look at them and you see what could be, what could be if you gave them all the tools to become. And so uh, I focus really on yeah vision um, and and making sure that 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 the way I see them isn't, isn't too far off from their essence. Uh, yeah. That no, that, that, that makes sense there. And, you know, it, it's like, I mean, you're working with them. I mean, you're trying to bring out the best in them. And, and I like what you said about caring and, and Hudson, now the younger generation, I mean, they're really, really popular. I mean, Lucy Hale, Noah Centineo, Shay Mitchell, Charles Melton, I mean, these, these young ones, I mean, what, how different is it for you working with them versus some other clients that you've worked with? Yeah. Um, how different is it uh, working with them? Just, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's interesting because um, people, I don't think give enough credit uh, to the people who have done it before them. Um, whereas that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that's the difference, you know, because if you look at, um, I, let's kind of break it down, like the beginning stages, you know, the, the 10 years old and that group, and then them in the twenties and then the forties and fifties, you, you, you look at it, everybody and you kind of just see where they're all heading. So, so it's almost like a timeline almost, whereas that you just see, oh yeah, yeah. I, Jessica went through that. So we went through that. Um, and, uh, and, and you're going to learn this and you, and, and through time. And then you kind of just like, I think that's the biggest difference is you just kind of break things down as timelines and, and, and knowing where they are in life. Um, I think that's a interesting, um, perspective on working with people because then you know how to talk with them, um, where they are in life. Uh, so the young ones, it's just, you, you know, where they are in life and you kind of, um, um, it's a little more playful. It's a little more fun. It's a lot more sensitive. Um, because, you know, some, some of them uh, can have a lot of preferences way too early on. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of uh, um, the older group, uh, and I wouldn't say older, but the more experienced uh, group, they, they've learned um, how to streamline things, if that makes sense. Um, but, but it's, uh, yeah, streamline. Yeah, I think that's the thing that you notice as time progresses for people. Um, but the young ones are just so much fun. Like Noah, we went on a, a week-long um, uh, trip to where did we go? We went to um, uh, Sedona, and uh, we um, pretty much like camped in the middle of the cabin, which it was snowing in. It, um, it was snowing in we're, we're Grand Canyon. Um, we we're in a cabin in, in the in the Grand Canyon. There's snow everywhere, and that's where I got a couple of those photos. Um, the most random snow I ever. I didn't know it snowed there, so that was weird. Um, but yeah, just fun. A lot of fun with that with that group, that age group. Um, and so it's so cool to see where they're at and where you know they're heading. Um, that's that's an interesting thing. No, and and Hudson, I mean, it's a it's a talent for you to really bring out the essence, bring out the best in your clients, and really make them feel confident and and comfortable. And I wanna I wanna talk with you about my books. You know, you 
I, I talk a lot about striving for that superior culture of excellence. And, and that's really what you're about. I mean, you have a constant striving for excellence. And I also talk about the importance of taking risk. Mm -hmm. And I want to get your thoughts about how important it is for you and others to really take risks to become successful. Ooh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, risk are, are everything. I mean, it's if you can't even I, you, you don't. It's, it's like this weird, um, whatever you believe in universe, uh, God, uh, um, all that stuff. It's some sort of weird like pattern that, um, you know, uh, uh, was given to us to say that, hey, you're welcome to stay exactly where you are. I'm okay with that. Like, that's just what it's saying at all times to, to, to us. I feel like the, the universe God is always saying to us is that, yeah, you're welcome to stay exactly where you are unless you want to do something different, but I'm going to have to prepare you. Um, and so, so that's, that's stretching you. That's, that's making you stronger one way or another to experience it at the highest level. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've always taken all the risk. Um, I didn't, I didn't really start collecting any sort of um, uh, any sort of my finances or anything together until like, you know, three years after um, I started really like working um, because I just put it all back into the photography into travel into, I mean, into anything I could just to create something bigger, which is all what all these, you know, mega, mega companies have done Amazon, um, Tesla, Apple, any of them, they've all taken the biggest risk and they've got the, you know, the biggest uh, rewards for it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, to get the nail on the head, it's, it's all risk. It's all risk. Um, um, but I mean, the, you get, I think most people aren't willing to risk stuff. So, so you're, so once you're willing to risk stuff, you're competing against a much smaller group for what it is that you're trying to get. Um, and so I like, I don't like competing. I don't like competing against a lot of people. So I rather just do the work and I'm in my own little, little area over there, you know, <laughs> just, just doing me. Um, uh, and that's the way I, I keep from competing is, is doing the work, um, and, and taking the risk and, and betting on myself, uh, over and over and over. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hudson, I, I like hearing that, uh, big time. And, and how does it feel? to have your photographs be on the covers of so many famous magazines throughout the world. I mean, how does that make you feel? You know, it's, um, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm so grateful for everybody, uh, you know, that helped me and, and uh, um, just everybody who's, who's come together and it more and more. So it's looking back at things where you really appreciate things um, like really looking back. Um, Cause you know, when you're in the midst of it, it's pure chaos. Um, every like, and this goes for anybody who's ever done anything great. Everyone's like, oh yeah, huh, that person's a basketball player, that NFL player. This person's a artist. This person's an actor, actress. You know, and like that looks easy. I could do that. It's pure chaos when it's happening. But uh, uh, but but um, you know, it the rewards looking back at it. Uh, you know that you changed some people and and hopefully inspired some people and hopefully people are looking at my stuff saying that it looks easy so at least they get the foot in the door and then obviously they're going to figure out the fire after but but at least it 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 got them nudged in a direction of interest you know no yeah. that's that's so good i mean it, it, what a i mean what an honor for for you to have that kind of success hudson and and i want to ask you about what are the variables that that you deal with that you're trying to, in, in order to create the perfect picture, the perfect photograph? What are the variables? What are the details you think about behind the scenes? Um, oh, so yeah, I guess I do have my ch kind of checklist in my own mind. Um, I I'm already assuming, and I already know it's not going to be how I thought it's going to be it's never the way you think it's going to be something. I don't, I, it, I've never, I don't think I've ever, I've had, um, thank God, uh, I haven't really had too many failures with shoots per se, because obviously there's things you can learn from everything. Um, but I really haven't had that many like crazy failures um, with the shoots uh, because there were like fixes. So I was able to, um, you know, fix things, but uh, but it just never goes as planned. Um, so my mental checklist, I think, um, is just understanding that number one is get your intent, right? Okay. The end of this end of the chaos, um, it's, it's going to look something like this. 
Um, however, it's going to get there. It's going to do that. So I think intent is a huge, huge thing. Bottom line, just fall for it. Like before getting into this, uh, this, um, um, conversation with you, uh, my, my intent was just, it's going to go great. I don't know what's going to happen. Like at the very end, I was just like, okay, he's going to be excited that this all, but, but I don't know what's going on in between. So number one is, um, I think all athletes do it. They envision, uh, you know, they envision, uh, um, the, the ball going in or, or the end zone or whatever it is. Uh, I envision, you know, people smiling at the end of it all. I envision people, um, hugging me at the end, um, um, high-fiving me at the end, um, being thankful for, for uh, me showing up and, and vice versa. Um, that's, that's number one, I think, uh, um, is, is, you know, having that intention. Um, but, uh, the, the things that I, I really focus on during the shoot is, um, it, <sighs> people usually find me uh, like when we start shooting is to do something different in a way like it, normally when i when i find a person and they have like a thing they have like this it's a huge thing it's i call it the model um the model uh um, the model face the model face where they it it's really interesting because they saw like maybe you know, 30 years ago they saw a um uh, ad and they saw a girl do like this or like or they saw a guy do this and and then they and then they just mimic it so they mimic it, right? We all mimic each other, but they don't understand that. So these supermodels, what made them a supermodel is they weren't just brooding. They were actually feeling the broodingness of everything, like the angst. They, they actually felt all that. And, and so I think when I, when I see this generation is they're just flooded with not just this generation, just everybody, just anybody that comes in front of my camera, they're flooded with information and they're all just trying to mimic each other. So when I, when I meet somebody, my goal is that they just at least tell me a real story, um, whatever that might be. So that could be, you know, just this, just them listening. If I'm talking a lot and, and then they're listening, they look like a human being in that moment, not just the person's going, like just faces every all over the place, you know? Um, and, and some people are just really good at where I never have to say anything where I'm just like, yeah, that person's feeling something, not afraid to feel something. But a lot of people, I think nowadays are just afraid to feel and they rather just do, do things with their face and bodies and stuff. So I make sure that we get our, our, our essence right first and foremost. Is this a, a real human in front of me? Can I bring that into the photo? Um, and uh, next, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's, you know, trying to calm down everyone to not try to, for them to not just, not just a one person to be the star on the, on the set. Like I can't have the hair just trying to be the star and the hair person. And then they're like, and then like, but then it doesn't ma match the makeup. And then the styling decided to, you know, throw in their, their two cents with the hair and makeup. And then, and then it goes and then it starts going, everybody has to be on the same um, vibe and, and trying to create um, the master goal. Nobody's a star. We're all the stars. And, and that's where I think, you know, if we kind of come together and do that, then we start, start creating, um, better work. Um, so that's another thing too, but intent, um, intent, if I were to just put it as a whole, um, I intend to, to make people, um, feel good about the end of it. Yeah. And everyone has to be focused on the mission and the goal and everyone plays a key role in the success of the photo shoot. And, and Hudson, what are, what are some of the reasons why you are successful in, as, a, as one of the top photographers? <laughs> um, I think uh, I care, bottom line. And again, I, I, I go back to that and even focus. I've, you've heard, we've all heard it uh, uh, you know, our, our entire lives. Like, just focus, focus. I'm like, yeah, I'm focused. Yeah, I'm focused. There are levels. There's depths of, of focus. There's depths of caring. There's, there's, um, and, and I notice when I'm like out of tilt and things are going like not as good, it's because I was caring about the wrong things, either myself, my own, my own, um, um, uh, you know, um, stress levels. Uh, even that's a thing like on set, if you're, if I'm caring about my own stress levels on set, then I've, I've lost, I've lost the game. I've lost the, I've lost the, the photo shoot um, because now that energy's out there. Now that person's going to start caring about themselves because they know I don't care about them. So who's going to care about them? Nobody. So they got to care about themselves. And then it becomes this disconnect. Um, so, and, and I'm not perfect at this, but I, I think I'm better than most. Uh, at least I try to be. 
um, um, just really working on, on caring about people. Um, so I think that's a, a big thing. Um, and that's, I, yeah, I, honestly, if I were to nutshell everything in there, it'd be that, um, that it, it's the caring. Um, the next, uh, I think one other thing too, is, um, um, if anybody gets into the art world, I, I try to tell them is that, um, you get paid for your aesthetic, you get paid for your aesthetic. So in other words, um, I, I, you know, I was able to do these things because I have an aesthetic of what looks real. Um, I have an aesthetic of what is um, uh, high quality, I guess you might say. And the only way you can do that um, is understand um, how, quite honestly, how simple humans are in a way. We, um, if I start singing a song, do I do I did it dumb did it do, we might all start mimicking that later tonight, um, whenever this airs. You know, you might just hum it a little bit. Um, we're that simple in that way, and so what you're filling your brain with um, is is also a thing. Um, I I had a, one of the biggest photographers in the world. Um, um, he was like number one, two, or three, still alive, um, and he um, told me he said essentially that. When you press down the button, it's because it reminded you of something. And if it's if you're being reminded of things that aren't of high quality, then that's the work that's going to come back out. So, so my thing is is what you uh, aesthetic. I really focus on my aesthetic. So I don't look at like you know nothing to it. But brand new photographers, you know, they're brand new. Great, amazing. I I, I can't really necessarily take in too much of that, or else I'm and and I might start creating from that kind of space versus if I just look at like the biggest billboards in the world all day, then when I click the camera, when I click it, it's because that person's mood on that billboard, it, it reminded me of something. Now, a, a brand new photographer, you know, they, they might be worried about, is the photo looking good? Is, is uh, there might be a bunch of insecurities happening on stuff and that energy is floating around. And then, so I would be replicating that energy if I clicked it during that time, rem remembering their work. That makes sense. So I, I, I'm very conscious of, of flooding my brain with essentially the Picassos of the world. Um, so that when, when I am given the opportunity to have a camera in my hand, I press it at the moment, or I at least know how to guide it to become a version of that moment. You can literally, you can mimic, if you pick the top photographer's work right now, try to mimic it exactly. I'm telling to a T, this photographer, this other photographer told me to do it. I don't do it, but it's just a concept that's really interesting is I've done it before. And, and if you try to copy it to a T, no matter what, even if you try to um, draw um, you know, a Picasso or something to a T, no matter what, it's going to have a different look, no matter what the model is going to be different, even if the model is Caucasian. Um, and still, there's different, there could be a different type of um, look in the Caucasian, you know, model. Um, uh, the hair could be, it could be brown, it could be white, whatever it might be. The hairstylist might have just messed up a little bit right here. If the girl is two inches shorter, then it's going to look different. And then it comes down to which photo are you actually going to pick? Are you really going to pick the, the one that looks exactly like it? Or are you going to pick the one that has sort of your version of it? So, so I think it's uh, important to just um, give credit to the artists who've done it before, but we're mimicking art um, over and over and over because we're inspired and we just want to keep creating that with same in sports. That's why people um, shoot the way they do, you know, um, all that stuff. It's because they're inspired by um, somebody that they saw do it. So, so I, yeah. Um, so aesthetic, I think that's, that's a big key to focus in on. Hudson, I, I like hearing your insights and, and, you know, just, just hearing your, what you're sharing. I mean, it's, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes of a photograph. And, and that's really, I like how you shared all that. And, and, and Hudson, obviously that's why you're successful. You care. I mean, you you have that constant striving for excellence. And I just really want to take uh, thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Rusty. I mean, God, it's good to see your face again. I haven't seen it for a year or so, at least. Um, so it's uh, good to see your smile too, buddy. Um, yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, Hudson. Take and care. thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Hudson and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness.
and help others find theirs. Aloha.